How to Get and Use the Current Time in Python. My name is Seb and I will be your guide for this short course. Understanding how to work with dates and times in Python is a useful skill to have, as it is commonly used in many Python projects. For example, the date-time module could be useful if you are working on a project such as creating a weather forecast app or a project which schedules events at certain times and days. In this course, you will learn how to tell the time in Python. For this, you will be mainly using the datetime module to create datetime objects in Python. Next, you will learn how to format dates and times in Python to make them more readable. You will then learn about what Unix time is, how you can work with it in Python, and the importance of UTC time. Lastly, I'll show you how you can make your datetime objects time zone aware. Let's get started. It's time for you to create your first datetime object. To begin, you will need to import the datetime module in Python. You can do this by typing in the following code. From datetime, import datetime as dt. I prefer to import the module as dt, however, this is not required. Next, you can instantiate a datetime object by setting a variable name of your choice equal to dt dot the now method. For this example, I've named my datetime object now, but you can name it something different if you wish. When you call your datetime object, you can see that Python returns several numbers. However, in this format, the meaning of each number is not very clear. In order to get a more readable output, you can use the print function when calling your object. As you can see, the output is now more readable, showing the year, month, and then the date, followed by the current time of day. When printing date times, Python closely follows formatting standards known as ISO 8601 formatting. You may have seen this before as it is a common method of formatting times and dates. You can also specifically call the ISO formatted date and time in Python by using the ISO format method. As you can see, this output very closely aligns with using the print function alone. However, in this example, you can see a T which acts as the standard separator between the date and the time. If you'd like to remove the T separator, you can add a separator argument to the ISO format method using a single space as the separator instead, like so. In this lesson, you learned to create datetime objects. You also learned how to call datetime objects using the print and ISO format functions. In the next lesson, you will learn about some of the different methods and attributes that can be called on datetime objects. There are several attributes in the datetime module that you can call on a datetime object. If you want to see the current month, you can print your object followed by the month attribute, which is dot month. The current month is October, so when you call now dot month, it returns 10, as October is the 10th month of the year. As another example, if you wanted to see just the current year, you could use the print function on your datetime object now, followed by the year attribute, which is dot year. As you can see, it returns the current year, which is 2023. There are several other attributes and methods that the datetime module allows you to call. For a comprehensive list of all of these attributes and methods, you can use your datetime object as a parameter in the dir function to return all of the attributes and methods of your datetime object. As you can see, there are many attributes and methods associated with datetime objects, as shown when calling the dir function. For example, you can call the dot second attribute to show the current second in the current minute out of 60. Or you can call the dot weekday method to return the day of the week as an integer, with Monday being 0 and Sunday being 6. If you want to learn more about what each of them do, you can test them out in your REPL or refer to the datetime documentation. If you'd like to make your outputs more readable, you can use the strf time method on your date time object. The strf time method takes format codes as arguments. Format codes are placeholders within a string, which are replaced with specific values when the code is executed. In the example that you will be shown, you will see the following three format codes used. Percent sign capital A, which will return the current weekday. Percent sign capital B, which will return the current month's full name. You'll also see percent sign lowercase d, which will return the numeric day of the month. Inside the method, you can write the following string, which states, today is percent sign capital A, which is the current weekday, percent sign capital B, which is the current month, and percent sign lowercase d, which is the current day. Upon executing the code, you can see that Python returns, today is Sunday, October 1st. 
There are many more format codes that you can use within the STRF time method. For a handy cheat sheet, you can head over to strftime.org. In the next lesson, you will learn about what Unix time is, the importance of it in programming, as well as how to work with it in Python.